Hello everyone, Peter Smith here. Uh, it's the day after Commission on Status of Women. I'm feeling a bit worn out. Uh, don't forget to buy a copy of my book. Um, there's still plenty left at www.lulu.com. I have a link to that uh, at the bottom of this program. Now, I just spent a very most unpleasant evening in Conference Room 4 at the UN at the end of the Commission on Status of Women. Now, they're meant to be discussing a document on social services and gender equality and that sort of jazz, and it ended up the usual slogging match over abortion and transgender rights and gay rights and all that sort of stuff and putting men down, all those sorts of things. Uh, so we got into conference room um, four at about, I don't know, six o'clock or so, say at 6.30, and, and then couldn't get a hold of the document that's been agreed, so they say, agreed conclusions, anything but agreed. Now, the, the, um, the chair of the meetings from Ireland, Ambassador Geraldine Nason, I'm just guessing she's a big pro-abortionist, a radical feminist, I would guess, I don't know for sure, but I would guess that. And she started off and says, well, we've got no translators. And they hadn't any translators because it was after 6 p.m. And Egypt, Egypt put in a bit of a complaint that he'd need 30 minutes to translate his statement. He wouldn't really, but he can do it in English just as quick. He's a bright chap. And then we had uh, Koki, Koki Grignon, the DPR from Kenya, that's the deputy permanent representative. She's a deputy ambassador for Kenya. She was the she was the one who who chaired the negotiations, if you could call them negotiations. And she was going on about being cyber bullied, and she'd had a thousand messages on her phone, and she felt fear, and or well, the UN should be a safe place for 193 countries. Now, I, I haven't direct check, and there's a blog about her and that, what she was doing wrong, and she was doing a lot of stuff wrong. And how much she was bullied, I don't know, because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen her phone messages. Anyway, anyway, the meeting really gets going, and then Saudi Arabia pipes up. They're a member of the commission. There's 45 countries are members out of the 193, and Saudi's one of them. And he pipes up and says, he will not join consensus. So he doesn't agree. He's disappointed the sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights are no good. And he, he wants more reference to parental rights and the family and um, national sovereignty. Ah, oh, I see. They, they, they just, they just, Koki just, with the national sovereignty paragraph, just went, vanished, disappeared. So he's not joining consensus. And that's it, basically, when those sorts of things happen. But then Bahrain spoke up. And he's a chap from Capital, and he's very well connected with all the royal families. And he, he, he's pretty hard. I met him once. He's pretty hard to, um, to bully. And there are lots of bullying going on uh, the last couple of weeks. So he doesn't join consensus either. So you've got two countries not join consensus. And then Guatemala speaks up. They welcome the document, but they don't like the sexual and reproductive health in there and the reproductive rights because they believe that life begins at conception and their, their country has laws to protect you from conception. But then Geraldine, I'll call her Geraldine, even though I really don't know her, from Ireland, the big chair lady, she just says, well, do we all agree? And a couple of seconds later, chunk, goes, the, goes the gavel and it's all agreed. And then Nigeria spoke up for the African group. Oh, he rambled on and on and on. And he wasn't happy about hardly anything. It's not about uh, reproductive health, didn't like that, and for young people. And then there was a point of order from Bahrain saying there's no joint consensus. Saudi Arabia, they objected. But Geraldine says, ah, bad luck, bad luck. It's, uh, we've gaveled it. It's already agreed now. So Bahrain and uh, Saudi didn't accept it. Then Brazil spoke up. Eh, met, a, met, a, met a minister from Brazil 
last week. She used to be an evangelical pastor. And, uh, not her to preach, but if I could understand Portuguese, I reckon I'd hear some good sermons from that lady. They weren't satisfied. Gender equals sex, not um, whatever you think you are, not a social construct. Didn't like the sexual and reproductive health, wanted religious freedom. The family, they wanted a bit more emphasis on the family, and then they wanted migration status to be, to be sorted out. And the Holy See, Monsignor Thomas, great, great man. He's from Poland. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man to negotiate. He says he didn't like the sex and reproductive health and this comprehensive sexuality education. And they took previous years. It was just imposed on them. So there was no consensus. Uh, on the family, it was bad wording. Procedural approach and bullying was shameful behaviour, he said. I agree with him. Shameful behaviour. Harassment, intimidation and the capitals were cause of disgrace. No place at the UN with all this bullying. Well, the bullying goes on with these delegates pretty regularly. I hear from a lot of them about being bullied. Then Liechtenstein spoke up. Oh, and then the UK spoke up. Oh, dear. I, I, I felt sad being a British citizen when she spoke up. Bushback would not be tolerated. Oh, this evil woman. Evil, evil, evil. And it's comprehensive sexuality education. She wants it, sense of issue, but she wants it. She wants to promote sexual immorality with all the children of the world. Then Iran spoke up. They only wanted, they wanted to reference their national laws. Um, Mexico gave a pro-abortion intervention. Uh, Mauritania wanted reservations on national legislation national sovereignty and they want it in the report uh, they'll be lucky to get it in the report of the document china were concerned about bullying human rights defenders <laughs> the, the human rights defenders they can be they can be pretty brutal some of these especially the female ones um, i've seen a video of them surrounding a, a catholic cathedral in argentina attacking the men and spitting on them and doing all sorts of stuff Human rights defenders sometimes are not, not very nice people. So the Chinese weren't very happy with these human rights defenders. And then Cuba wants a right to development. And they want more, they want more promotion of abortion. No, they didn't like sanctions. They thought the sanctions the US put on them were, were not a fair shake. <laughs> Nothing new in that. Comoros. 18 countries they were speaking for. They had concerns about the family and parents and promoting the families and and it was and they complained about the methods and they needed a bit of national sovereignty and the process wasn't good. Two states hadn't agreed to all this consensus. And the Secretariat got a chip in and they said, oh, no, it's already agreed. Uh, no point of order there, so oh, that was that, that was that. Um, and Argentina with a whole bunch of supposedly Catholic Central and South American countries wanted no regression, no regression. Uh, full steam ahead with the sexual depravity and abortion on demand and all that jazz and the transgender and rest of the stuff, all that stuff, they wanted more and more of that. Uh, and then Japan, they, they didn't say much, but they spoke up. Djibouti, Djibouti, there was, there was Yusuf, he had a little bit of a go about, uh, agreed with the African group, Comoros, and he wanted a bit more reference to the family. Then the United States of America, they uh, processed, they said the process was flawed, controversial terms, and they weren't happy about all the abortion promotion and all the rest of it. So they were, they were trying to follow President Trump's line, pro-life line, which was good, which was good. And they didn't like comprehensive sexuality education. And they said that they were fully, fully right with doing sanctions on whoever. Didn't mention Cuba, but they meant Cuba. South Africa, they, they were pushing the pro-abortion agenda. The Arab group with Egypt. I don't know how many they had an Arab group. There's a fair few there in the Arab group. Family and, in, and they wouldn't, weren't happy with how the family things went. And Lebanon 
Uh, Lebanon speaking up for the human rights defenders. And, oh, they all gave a big cheer for that. And then Sudan said they were an African group. They support the African and Arab group and they didn't like the abortion promoting stuff. In Kuwait, um, they were pushing up for national laws and Tunisia was on about abortion for rape. United Arab Emirates were on about national laws. In Guatemala, put in a reservation about not supporting sexual and reproductive health and rights. So, that's what an agreed conclusion looks like. There was half the countries of the world not happy. Ah, but good old Geraldine, ha, ah, she gaveled it. And it became the agreed conclusion on social social services or something, but the um, the abortion promoting paragraphs they just copied out of the rural women and girls um, document and didn't even take take the rural women and girls out, so they just plonked it in. So it's a total, totally corrupt system, totally corrupt claiming it's, um, it's consensus, totally corrupt saying it's agreed. And I'd bet my bottom dollar that not too many of these reservations will turn up in the report of CSW number 63. Now, as you're probably aware, nothing positive about men, all negative, a negative comment about patriarchy. I'm just trying to think where that was from. I think that was, that might have been, oh, South Africa, the snide, snide comment about patriarchy and all. So it was just the usual bun fight at the UN. I don't know if um, any women or girls will, will, you know, will, um, you know, get anything out of this. There's a huge amount of time where all the delegates pretended to negotiate. And, you know, they're going to 10 o'clock most nights. Went right through to 5.30 in the Thursday morning. Just before, fr well, actually Friday morning by the time you went through Thursday. And everyone was hoping they'd get some sort of a decent document and it was, was hopeless, absolutely hopeless. So there it is, another uh, another two weeks at uh, Commission on Status of Women. A lot of deja vu, uh, nothing new under the sun, it says in Ecclesiastes, but we were little candles there um, shining in a dark place. And I... Um, I put up put up my last little interview, and uh, some some of these uh, radicals said I look like a cannibal, but I've never knowingly eaten any human being, and they claim my hands were for beating up homeless people, which is really funny because my mate Reg was homeless most of his life, and he's my best mate. So there it is, there it is. So don't forget confessions of a pro lifer at the UN. It's a good read. Now, my pastor here in, in the East Village, I was down there helping give out food to homeless and other people today, and he said it's a good read. He's read through it. It's a very good read. So that's what Pastor Taylor Field said. It's not just me saying it's, it's a good read. He said it was a good read, and he learned a little bit about me, and he said a bit of my sense of humour came through, which it does occasionally. Oh, and I'm, I'm reading something else. I'm reading something else. Let me get it for you. This is a great read. The Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Oh, I tell you. I tell you, the social justice warriors, neo-Marxists and the rest of them, they should have taken a bit of a spell in the Gulag Archipelago under Stalin. And then they might have changed their tune about all this stuff. And the Venezuelans, I don't understand why they, they take on this socialism and communism. And as Margaret Thatcher said, you basically you soon run out of other people's money. And I mean, that, that's what they're going for here in America. The Democrats are embracing all this, um, all this far left stuff and, and radical environmentalism and banning fossil fuels in 12 years or the world will be ended. Oh, there's always people claiming, ah, oh, the world's going to if we don't do this or that or the other thing. It's a load of nonsense, I reckon. 
I've seen lots of these predictions that haven't come true yet. But one day the Lord will return. We don't know when. We don't know when. But he will return and he'll sort everything out. We don't need to worry about that. So that's my little rant for today. I sort of got it off my chest now. Uh, there's a lot of, um, a lot of skullduggery been going on these last couple of weeks. A lot of pretended negotiations. It wasn't really negotiations. It wasn't really consensus. They never really agreed on the agreed conclusions, but there it is. That's the UN for you. We're there trying to keep them honest, but it's a tough, tough job. So thanks for uh, praying for me, if you pray for me. Um, thanks for watching, and if you, um, if you like my little talks, you can share this video with your pals on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or somewhere. Might get a few more subscribers, you never know, you never know. And, and I might get to sell a few more copies of the book. Got rid of 50, got rid of 50 the last few weeks. Gave a few away. But anyway, I've covered the, I think I covered the printing costs, which is good, and the Lord provides. So God bless you all, and um, I might do another one after this, but I'm not sure. So we'll see you later. Goodbye.